Ah, here it is. Yes, dub side of the moon. What is the dub side of the moon? Well, it's kind of what it sounds like. It is a reggae tribute by the Easy Star All Stars to Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon. And for a good decade now, every year, once it starts to get warm, um, I spend the first month or two of spring outside uh, drinking nice beer and listening to this and country music. Well, and Bob Marley. So I guess I go to reggae and country when I'm sitting outside for whatever reason. And, uh, I guess the drunker I get, the country comes on, but the reggae always starts it. So I was working outside today, um, got my tank top on and uh, was pulling weeds and such, and I just got a hankering for this record. Um, it's really cool, um, inspired uh, sort of tribute because they've changed the whole sound of it, and it works really well. Uh, and not just because the psychedelia culture involved with Dark Side of the Moon or I guess the that side of Pink Floyd as a band in general, but the music lends itself to the rhythms of reggae in a very natural way. The dub sound applied um, doesn't take away from the music, it just makes it that much uh, more fun at times. And it's not better than Dark Side. Um, that's a gem, uh, as we all know. But it definitely stands alone as something that gets enough play for me that it's, it's, it's got a rightful place right there against it. So it's still Roger and David's thing. It's still their baby. It's just got a nice twist on it. And it's good for this time of year. So if you haven't ever heard Dub Side of the Moon, but you have heard Dark Side of the Moon, give this a shot. If you've never listened to Dark Side of the Moon, well, stop what you're doing right now. Go listen to that. And ignore what I'm saying. And then come back and consider a cover album. Um, but if you like reggae, you must certainly check this out because it's really cool, really well done production-wise, and I think there's a lot that we can talk about on it. So I'm going to put it on. I'm going to give it a spin, uh, you know, make some mental notes, and then we're going to have a little talk about it. So links below. Check out Easy Star All Stars, Pink Floyd Dark Side Tribute, Dub Side of the Moon. So what'd you think? You know, it's uh, a pretty good number 62, I think. I think timeline, counting the days into the year, getting to the 62nd day, if you have ever been through Arizona, you know that that's definitely spring. We are at March 2nd and it sounds good. And what I like most about this record overall is its sheer ability, its fun sort of playfulness, and uh, it's just good energy overall. I mean, every time I put this album on, I, I have a good time with it, whether I be alone or with friends, and I I don't think I can count on two hands the number of people I've gone out of my way to show this to. So, that being said, its shareability makes it, in effect, something I really think most people enjoy, because you are excited to hear it. If you know Pink Floyd's, it kind of makes you want to, you know, hear this whole version that they do because you're so pulled in from the very beginning that you want to see how they do each track off the original album. So, just a lot, a lot of good, a lot of good in there, and overall, uh, excellent album for uh, spring, for summer, for feel-goods, uh, just just really down-to-earth effort at tributing the record, but doing it in an original sense. So, let's talk about the press. What I want to notice right away is this marijuana green clear vinyl with sort of two-tone, really playful. Um, I, I don't know. I'm not big into, um, you know, the green, but I think that this... Uh, resonates here as appropriate, um, and I don't have any problem with any of that. Um, everybody has their own vices. Mine is of liquid virtue, but um, I think that... Cheers. I think that in this case, it works for the record, and it really stands out. I have a lot of colored vinyl, and I don't have one that looks like this. 
Um, so if you're looking for something fun, it has the sort of Jamaican colors on the dub side of the moon here, and it has these, you know, two-tone green. It, it really, it really highlights sort of the spirit of the record. Um, you know, what else do they do? Um, on Money, uh, you know, the original track by Pink Floyd, they use the sample of the cash register to build a percussive background, and um, that utilized is sort of what makes money such a nominal track because that was sort of I guess experimental but uniquely done in a way that's memorable. Um, now if you don't know you wouldn't know but they've replaced the tones of the cash register with a, a bong noise with the bubbling and, and sort of the exhale and use that and I think that's simple uh, excuse me sensibly appropriate in that if you don't know, you don't know, so it's not hurting anybody. And if you do, probably for good reason, you can appreciate it on a satirical level um, and also on just sort of like the embodiment of reggae and I guess that culture. Um, which leads me to say, lyrically embodied sort of some of this Rastafari spirit, even though it's... Uh, got some of that doom and gloom on the opposite. It's sort of what it takes to become, I guess, a Rastafari, or a Rastafarian, uh, is sort of the direction that, you know, this original lyrical content of Dark Side of the Moon takes me. And I think that existential awakening is supposed to promote, I guess, growth. It's supposed to promote um, higher level thinking. Uh, and as a species, we've been working towards getting better at, you know, just being human and being who we are. And I think it starts with emotion and, and communication. And music is a huge and powerful tool for that. So Pink Floyd said something really well, you know, time is the master. Well, time has done this album no harm. I mean, uh, reinterpreted here, it sounds amazing. And I think it, it goes without saying that you could probably reinterpret Dark Side of the Moon into any genre, and it would work. Um, do I want to hear a metal version? No. Um, and I love metal music. But I think that certain efforts to make it, you know, different have worked. Um, I saw Pretty Lights at Coachella, and he did a remix, and I hated it. I hated every minute of it. And that's because there's certain things you don't mess with. And you don't put an 808 bump behind Pink Floyd. But this sort of, I guess, movement and spirit of reggae music that inspires people, it fits the bill here. Um, and to own it on vinyl is just one extra step further. It's, it's like saying, I like this so much that I need to buy it. And so I hope that, you know, you can sort of see yourself, you know, willing to participate in this as a cover-up. Don't let any biases uh, affect you, like I mentioned with the Pretty Lights. Um, this is a tribute, after all. They took the time to go to a studio and re-record the entire album. And, and just... Just being able to do that in and of itself sort of shows a testament to their instrumentation skills. I mean, they're obviously talented musicians. They they apply themselves to make the dub sound or the reggae sound sort of pull through. Um, and it's done really smart. I mean, the horns are, are fitted just so the extra snare pops, you know, that make that sort of off-kilter rhythm of, uh, you know, Jamaican reggae style music sort of come to life. They fit in there. Um, and, you know, overall, I don't have too many hang-ups about it. I think there's a few times when maybe some of the delay on the guitar just goes a little far, a little farther than I would like, but that's where the dub version of reggae music sort of comes from. That's how you get that sort of spaced out feeling, and so I'm not going to knock them for that. They're just doing what their, I guess, their sound lends to, and, and they want to be able to identify as that, not just a reggae tribute, but as a dub sound when you're called the dub side of the moon, and that's what you're known for, and they even have a dubber side of the moon, which is this album done on a remix scale that makes it even more, you know, more of that. So if that's what you're really into, look for Dubber Side of the Moon. Now, if you like 
this sort of approach to traditional music done in the dub sense. They've also got, uh, they being Easy Star All Stars, Radio Dread, which is Radiohead's um, OK Computer done all the way through in a dub sound. Pretty cool. And they've also got Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Dub Club Band. Um, also good. Least favorite of the three, um, but it's just because I don't think that, although the Beatles sort of warrant that sort of mentality, especially, you know, I guess psilocybin comes to mind. I don't know. But it doesn't, um, it doesn't take me to a place where I need to hear that in a reggae sense. It was a really good record originally, and it doesn't need to change. But I could say that that argument would work here. Um, yet, I really, really enjoy this. Like, thoroughly enjoy it. I listen to it every year at this time, and it, it sort of... When Us and Them starts on here, it sort of washes over me, like, like an enjoyable breeze. And it sort of takes me down a level, and I embrace it. And I think that sense um, sort of happens throughout the entire record the more I think about it. Um, it has magical qualities of just sort of atmospheric excellence. It really pulls you in and embraces you. And, and it's identifiable. I mean, I've listened to Dark Side of the Moon, you know, countless times since I found out about Pink Floyd when I was 13 or whatever. And this sort of takes that defeated, I guess, you know, again, existential, you know, place and, and takes it out of the dark um, and dark side of the moon, you know, and brings it into a more acceptable or dubby place. And, and that's not to say that it's wrong or you have to have lightheartedness in your music, but, you know, sometimes that's okay. And for an album that warrants being played over and over and over again, like Dark Side of the Moon, it's sort of nice to have this alternative available at times. So, you know, without getting too hung up on lyrics, without getting too hung up on the fact that, well, Pink Floyd did it first, I think that it's okay to say Easy Star All-Stars have really, you know, put themselves out there with this record and made something uniquely original, embraced the original content, but put their own stamp on it. Um, you know, Jimi Hendrix covering Dylan's Watchtower, holy crap, you know, pretty much reinvented the song. I'm not going to go that far here, um, but I will say that it's it's got an appropriate place um, in my musical catalog, and I hope that you are willing to check that out. So, if you like Jimmy Cliff or Sublime, even the R.X. Bandits who we've talked about in the series, um, if you like feeling good, definitely give the easy dub uh, just you know, a once over, because it's going to make you feel good, you know, that's, that's really the sentiment I want to leave you with, is that this is a feel-good record, in a feel-good place, done with feel-good mentality, and at the end of the day, the world is full with a lot of not-so-feel-good, and you sort of need that sometimes, so with that, I'm going to leave it there, why don't you comment below, tell me how you think about, uh, Red Stripe? No, joking. Um, you can if you want. Um, tell me what you think of this cover album. Do you think that it's good? Do you think it's tasteful? Do you think it, it sort of robs the original content? Um, are you a purist who only wants to hear Pink Floyd do it? I mean, what are your thoughts overall on what these guys have done here? And what else do you think they could have done to maybe improve or maybe take away to make it better overall? I like it the way it is. Maybe some of the the rapping on one of the tracks. It's it's a little it's a little much for me, but it 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 goes with the style of music. So I'm not gonna knock it. I'm saying I like it the way it is. I'm giving it a proper review and saying that it's a solid, full album. That's a great tribute and it's a cool piece to have if you are a collector of things Pink Floyd or reggae. So. If you wouldn't mind, please like, subscribe to my channel, um, share my videos, use the hashtag 365 album reviews in 2016 so we can stay connected. Look for me on Instagram, daily underscore vinyl, and of course on Facebook at Daily Vinyl Online. Um, Twitter, have a handle, Daily Vinyl AZ, if you want to shout at me like Kanye. You know, there's always that. Alright, till next time, much love.
Take care.